Hello everyone, my name is Axman and today I'm going to be looking at Astro Kill. Now don't worry if you haven't heard this game yet, I don't know why you would worry. Oh well, never mind, moving on. As the game isn't set to release until April the 1st or April the 16th. I don't know, I see two different dates, I'm going to go with one of them. One last thing, I've got to give a great big thanks to Doomsday Games for giving me a free copy of the game for beta testing. Or better testing, I don't know, you people are weird. So, moving on, what is Astro Kill? I've not really worked out a category to put this game in yet, so I'm going to go with something I've just literally made up off the top of my head. Realistic Space Physics Dogfight Simulator. Mm, yes. Now enough of that, let's go on with the first impressions, shall we? Straight into the game, we're greeted with a lovely menu with four options to choose from. Practice, as you can imagine, is a practice game. I don't know why I even had to explain that. I'm not going to go over it, but I do have a suggestion that when you do get this game, you do the practice, because my god, that is very helpful. You then have a choice between campaigns or survival. Let's try out the campaigns first. Straight into the campaigns, and you have an option to choose two different alliances. Each alliance has their own little quirks, which it shows you straight off the bat so you know what you're actually getting into when you join one. But don't worry too much about a commitment because you do get the choice to switch back and forth rather easily. I feel like my voice went funny then. Never mind. Each faction has about two to three missions to complete in the campaign. These missions include dogfighting or just simply taking down a big massive warship or at least disabling their cannons. Survival mode then is pretty much the exact same thing although it goes on for a lot longer and it is extremely fun to play. Each faction has two different types of ships to choose from. One ship which is very big and very bulky and moves very slowly, has a very powerful weapon and can take one hell of a beating, whereas the other ship, which is very small and very puny, but can move extremely fast and is very nimble and has a bit of a puny weapon compared to the bigger ships. Aesthetically, they all look slightly different, although they basically do the same thing and obviously the secondary weapons are different for each faction. Now let me tell you why the Outer Belt Alliance is so much more powerful than Dominion of Man. That unguided flat cannon is ridiculously powerful when you manage to get the aim right. Unlike the Dominion of man's guided missiles and the bullets which every ship can use, they have to hit the target dead on to inflict damage, whereas the unguided flak cannons only have to get close to the enemy to inflict a ton of damage because they explode. Now obviously you do have some sort of defence with this with a magical gravity shield. Every ship has this magical gravity shield which can be activated for 20 seconds at a time, although you can turn it off whenever you'd like and it recharges over time. When the shield is up, guided missiles can no longer get a target on you, and every other ballistics weapon, e.g. your normal gun or the unguided flat cannon also do significantly less damage. But whilst this shield is up, you cannot attack, which leaves you a bit of a sitting duck, or you can try and get out of the way, I suppose. So, given that these ships have a very diverse amount of weapons, how do they handle? The physics in this game are very tricky to get a hold of. It's completely different to pretty much every other flying game you've probably tried in the past. The first thing you're probably going to do when you're playing in this game is smash in that W button down to maintain as high speed as you need to. But obviously, in space, there's no resistance, so you you don't need to do that. You have to try and get your speed up or down to the point of where you need it and then it just maintains that speed by itself. This works very well when you're flying in a straight line but as soon as you try to steer or twist around it makes flying very difficult as you're constantly going in that one direction you've already tried to push yourself in. And if you're anything like me and struggling to find that bloody target just look at him and then press tab. Your target then shows up on the right hand side showing you how much health he has and how far away they are and what guns they have to use. And both the minimaps on the left and right of the screen are are a bit tricky to get used to at first, but you get used to them pretty quickly. And you do have a choice between third person or first person, although I think first person is much more accurate. One mechanic this game has which I think is quite fun, but a bit difficult to get used to is the respawn. Once you've died and you need to respawn, you get to choose between one of the other ships that are currently out in combat. This is fun, except for the one problem that these ships have already taken damage and they've already used up a lot of their ammo. One thing that is fun is replenishing your health and your ammo. To do this, you simply have to fly through your mothership. My god, that just sounds awful. Given that the game is in alpha, I have to say I haven't experienced any sort of drops in FPS or any crashes whatsoever. They've managed to make this game very stable. My overall thoughts for the gameplay, it's very tricky to get used to that learning curve, but once you've got the hang of it, it is actually very fun to play. Also, the satisfaction of actually shooting something and destroying it, I don't know how to explain it. It's really fun in this game. I, I, I don't know. I have to say I am very much looking forward to the final outcome of this game.
game and I am really looking forward to see what else they're going to be implementing. Now I don't currently know if they're going to be putting in any sort of multiplayer but my god I hope they do. This thing would be so brilliant on multiplayer. Oh my god. And that's it for my first impressions. For a game that's so early in its alpha stages and what it's like already, my god it's very fun. Anyway I'm done. I'm very glad I've managed to at least shine some light on this very fantastic game which was kind of hidden under the radar for me. I don't know about everyone else but anyway thanks for watching and I hope to see you all again soon. Oh by the way the next unboxing video should be coming up quite soon. Mm.